in the news this week. Syria has gas, but not the type we want to send our soldiers over for. Egypt strongman is El Sisi. Jersey beaches say goodbye to the dolphins, the dead ones and the ones running from the cougars, who are now headed to the northeast Philly area. And Philly is set to open New Jack City, better known as the Philadelphia School District, just this week. All that and more on this week's edition of the Sunday Paper Program. It's the Amelie Serious News Network with Dam Han, Dave Morrow, and Darren Martinez. Syria is now taking the gassing its own people after the civil war has dragged on for two and a half years now. Our President Obama has said that the gassing was going to be the bottom line for bombing. Yet in his response, before he does, he's going to send a delegation of American citizens over to represent our country and see if they can't talk him down from doing such things. The delegation is going to include Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton representing the African tribes of the United States, Chief Cha Ching, head of the Indian tribes and CEO of all casinos will be there, and Pedro My Peso from the migrant workers community will also be represented. Uh, turns out Salazar Too Slick Sanchez was going to be asked to go, but he's gotten back across the board. Uh, the British Parliament has voted against any action on getting involved in Syria, prompting President Obama to say, fuck the Brits and the Queen too. Egypt, meanwhile, remains embroiled in chaos after their chief army officer, El Sisi, <laughs> I'm only serious, that's his name, has continued with his military rule. Gotta tell you folks, it's hard to be a tough guy when your name is Sissy. You know what I'm saying? In the nation, we recently celebrated the, for the 50th time the Martin Luther King's March on Washington and famous speech, I Had a Dream. Of course, that speech belongs to the King estate, which now belongs to a corporate conglomerate, which means that no one was allowed to use the speech at this year's march. However, the good news was, all the speeches that led up to that speech, they were allowed to use. And Jesse Jackson did include a brief, Martin had a dream, and Obama isn't it. That's what he said. That's what he said. But speaking of Obama and the troubles over in the Middle East, he's also asked Congress to decide on the U.S. move against Syria and its use of chemical weapons. Of course, it was Congress who approved the expansion of the U.S. territory in the Indian lands. Congress who appeared, who uh, approved the war on Mexico that resulted in Texas, New Mexico, and half of California. And of course, Congress also approved the bombing of Japan. So, uh, talk about getting the right people to decide this one. That's who we're looking for. In Philadelphia, the city celebrated the Labor Day weekend with its annual parade. This year's Grand Marshal, the Union Rat. You know the big inflatable one, we've been seeing him around. Also, we had the Made in America concert series wrapped up its second annual Philadelphia's uh, Festival to the Arts program. Beyonce headlined Saturday show and Nine Inch Nails headlined Sunday show. Turns out in the news, arrests for assaults were up to a summer high on Saturday and public urination was at an all time summer high on Sunday night. Go figure. Go figure. And the woman who let the gangsters into the Piazza at Schmitz last year, who then ambushed and killed a couple who were in a drug deal type of raid, was given time served, two and a half years, and parole. Mayor Nutter Butter Peanut Butter had this to say, that it's the city's way of showing that crime doesn't pay, but snitching does. But we're only serious. Crime pays too, pretty well. Pretty well. <laughs> also in Philadelphia, a man was shot in the buttocks this week in the Queens Village section. Authorities are still looking for the weapon. <laughs> we don't know. In Ben Salem area, two banks were robbed on the same day. In the first robbery, the man handed the teller a note and stated he had a gun in his pocket before making off with a few thousand dollars in cash. The second robber was more aggressive and jumped the counter and got his own money before running out where a bunch of dumbasses worried about the bank's money when chasing after him to the park's casino. In there, the cops were finally found him and arrested him 
apparently next to a man with a gun in his pocket. Yeah. The Dolphins continue to roll up to the Jersey beaches as Labor Day weekend closes out. The Jersey uh, environmental community hired a dolphin whisperer to find out what's going on and making all these dolphins beach themselves. Turns out they want the song to stop stronger than the storm. That's hired as much as we are, folks. <laughs> Cracker, please. In Allentown, a pregnant 15-year-old was taken to the Lehigh Valley Hospital after falling 30 feet from a second-floor roof. She had gone out on the second-floor roof to retrieve a baby's gate and happened to step on a hunk of plywood, which forced her to slip off the roof and fall 30 feet. Luckily, she was able to get herself up, get back up in that apartment, and call for help herself. When the first responders arrived, they asked what happened, and she said, I didn't realize how high a second-floor roof was since she grew up in a trailer, apparently. Atlantic City will get its first strip clubs inside a casino next week. Of course, they also announced that uh, gamblers drink for free and smoke is allowed anywhere, as long as you're gambling. However, you will not be able to swipe your credit rewards card through the cleavage to get extra points. But the ass wipe will still work, at least, get, at least in the plumber's unit. Yes, sir. In India, Domino's Pizza has opened up a new store in New Delhi. India is the company's top foreign market. Go figure. McDonald's, not to be outdone, plans to open a string of outlets there this year. They pledge that all the beef will be imported, thus eliminating the fear of eating anybody's relative. <laughs> in India, so. uh, speaking of Indians, the U.S. Labor Department has gotten the owners of 55 Dunkin' Donuts in the New York, New Jersey area to pay back wages to employees for overtime and underpayment. No word on the Asian market yet. <laughs> you know, they own the other half. In entertainment news, I gotta tell you folks, I feel sorry for Steve Harvey. That's right, the host of the Family Feud. He also has a weekly talk show in the afternoon and a radio program right here in Philadelphia. However, he's gotta carry that back of that, the show right on his back. Primetime TV, grand prize, $20,000. Cracker, please, for five people? And, if they're really good, they can win a car. Not five cars, a car. Which would be fine if they were Mexican families. Which they're not. Uh, Steve, you know what Steve's going to need on that show to get the ratings up? He needs a van up black. You know what I mean? Let somebody up there on this ladder flipping the numbers. Something. Get Steve more money. But with more on our entertainment news... We're going to get an update on the box office scores for this weekend with our behind-the-scenes guy, Darren Martinez. Darren? Uh, number one in the box office this week made only $17 million, which isn't a lot of money. But the person who took that number one spot was One Direction, which is a, I think a boy band. A very popular boy band who did a concert, and that's number one in the box office. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. So uh, at number two, The Butler, Lee Daniels, The Butler. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it, but um, I'm not going to see it. Uh, number three, We're the Millers, a comedy uh, with Jennifer Aniston. Apparently, she's a stripper in this. Must see me. Must see. Yeah, it's a must see, uh, but I didn't see that either. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Expendables series, uh, part three. I don't know if you're into Expendables. Did you see any of them? I'd be lying if I said here. Okay. Well, they've got all the, all the guys, all the action stars from the 80s and 90s all together. So they're playing with action figures. That's how... The, that's how Sylvester Stallone comes up with the screenplays for them. He just plays with a bunch of actors. People go, uh, boom, boom, that, boom, boom, uh, this is scene four. Yeah. We'll have to wait to see. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for this week. I got the Expendables 3, the box office numbers. That's it, guys. I'm Darren Martinez. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Darren, for that update. The good news about that, the uh, karate film, though, their mouths move with the words. <laughs> the rest of it was slow. Okay. Now, let's give you last week's weather, folks. As normally, Cynthia Stormy Flats Haskins would be here for you, but like the rest of the iOS news team, she too is off for Labor Day. <laughs> yeah, if they, she was Mexican, she'd be here. Manuel Labor. So, for last week's weather update, let's start with the beaches. I mean the beaches. The beaches. The New Jersey beaches, that is. The weather was perfect for most of the week down there for the summer folk enjoying a short time. Of course, near the end of the week, it got a little cloudy and overcast, some rain came down. Of course, that gave Mommy and Daddy time to make more beach covers for next year. Governor Christie, we love you. Uh, some folks chose the mountains. 
for their end of the summer affairs. Skies stay clear for most of the week. And the best part, unlike in California, no wildfires around here. <laughs> Big plus. And parents everywhere rejoice heavily this weekend as their expensive summer day care programs for their kids have come to an end. And free school's back. Yes, sir, free school's back. Uh, except if your kids go to Philly schools, folks, where uh, Camp New Jack City is just getting ready to get under, underway. Yes, sir. So, that's it for our weather for last week. Tune in next week for this week's weather and what you could have and probably should have done. Next up, folks, is our weekly segment where Dave Morrow and John Smarmy get together and talk about current things in the nation and the world. However, on this segment, I'm interviewing Dave Morrow this time because Smarmy is still out on assignment. And, uh, boy, that's kind of crazy. Here you go. Good evening, folks. Tonight, I'm filling in for John Smarmy. He's on assignment right now, but we're here with Dave Morrow who was just back from a trip recently down to South America where he came across a tribe of midgets who are a suicide cult. We're going to see him now. He's out on his back deck here. Dave! Daniel, sir! How it's you good doing? Good to see you there. How are you? Nice to see you. Yeah, glad to be back. John's, glad still to be on, back. Uh, John's still on his assignment, so I'll be filling in for him. Yeah, he's, a, he's a good, he's a good uh, promising young kid there. Right? Got a lot of hope for him. He's, gonna shoot. he's got really nice shoes. They say you were just back from a, a trip where you came across an, an underground cult run by a manic midget, a suicide cult of sorts? Uh, yes, yes. Um, as you, uh, originally what had happened, uh, I'd heard stories of a man called, uh, uh, named uh, Pierre Lapierre, a little fellow, uh, French Canadian way of uh, Montreal. But uh, he, he managed, uh, he, he traveled throughout Europe and the southwestern United States looking to initiate other uh, dwarves such as himself. You could call them midgets. Midgets. Yeah, <laughs> we all understand that. He be, but he'd been recruiting other, other uh, midgets like himself uh, in the belief that he is, a, he is the chosen one amongst the midget uh, species, subspe whatever you want to call that area. We better just whole, stick with the midgets. We'll just stick with the midgets. <laughs> We're going to have protesters soon. But uh, according to Pierre Lapierre, uh, he, uh, he is the reincarnation of the midget god that first brought midgets to this earth. And his plan is for the, all of his midget brethren and sis, sistren, sis, I don't know what you, sorority? A cistern is something you would pee in, but <laughs> same difference. Pierre wants to uh, consume his followers. Uh, they will, they in turn kill themselves in preparation for this ritual. And uh, once he has eaten and devoured every midget soul on this planet, he will uh, grow to 10 times the height of the uh, average human. Oh, so he's not the suicider, he's the no, suicide he. Yes. Suicide he. What got you involved in a search for him? You ever been to Rotterdam? Never. No. no. It's, uh, it's a city uh, in. Europe. See, when you go on a bender in like the more Slavic countries, you, act, you don't remember where you wind up throughout the course of it. But I know I was in Rotterdam. Yes. Pierre Lapierre. Uh, well, he's a he's a he's a smooth talker. Was he a stowaway? Because you could pack probably pack him in your luggage. Customs. Not happy about that. Uh, Does he get his, nice uh, calendar? His only had one day on. That was suicide day. Uh, oh. It wasn't really like a long-term plan. It was just we're gonna meet in Sao Paulo. And that's gonna happen. Uh, I was not able to prevent the uh, the mass suicide, but I was able to chase Lafayette out before uh, he consumed the courses and their bank accounts. That's I think that's part of it. So I got his. He owes a lot of money. To me. At know. any point during your visit, did any of them ask you for a shoulder ride? Remember I told you about those midget wrestler fellows? They don't ask for one. Uh, they get one. <laughs> Have you ever thrown a four foot two man off of your back when his arms, though they're about this long, are about as strong as an iron vice grip on your throat? No, but I have thrown some of my grandkids around, you know. 
I think it'd be tough. It'd be tough. Is that how they, uh, your nose got darkened up there? To yeah. Uh, one of them sitting the wrong way on the shoulders or something? Nah, see, I, I'd managed to overcome Lapierre's security force when I approached the man himself. Uh, he jumped me, tried to cut my nose off with a pair of scissors. With those, those little uh, child safety scissors they give kindergartners, those are the only ones he can really fit his fingers He's around. probably trying to spite your face. So, Well, then, he, he knows I, I love my, um... Now, were they angry at all because we didn't send John Smarmy out on this assignment with you? Oh, no. Oh, Smarmy. That's it. Smarmy's next! Smarmy, if you are watching this right now, Pierre Lafierre is not to be trifled with. Stay away from that man at all costs. I will find you. I have to go, Dan. This has been a pleasure interviewing you. Oh, yeah. thank you. And save Swarm. Future! There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Back to the studios. Welcome back, and lost some clip. But luckily, folks, in studio tonight is Dave Morrow, and uh, he's here to give us an update on if he's found John yet, because we haven't heard. Dave, have you, have you found John yet? Uh, yes, Dan. Uh, Actually, after I, I left the interview, I was able to, to grab hold of one of the iOS news cameramen to follow me. Uh, I was able to track down Smarmy, who had just come into contact with the infamous Pierre Lapierre. And uh, we have footage of that encounter right here. Damn! That's some video. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, no, I think I've seen that guy before on stage around the city clubs. He's got many an alias. Ah, I finally uncovered. No the idea. So what happens in the end? I saw he got away. Did you chase after him? Did you catch him? What? Well, let's uh, let's look at it this way. I I figured out what my next work is going to be, an uh, unofficial outsider's biography of Pierre Lapierre. May he rest in peace. Soon enough. I mean, maybe. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll look for it on shelves sometime within the next year, or maybe two. The Little Messiah That Couldn't, by Dave Moore. Well, thanks, Dave, and uh, thanks for actually saving our smarmy. Not a problem. That was a close call. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Well, I'm closing tonight, folks. I like to do a thing on the Middle East, and it's what I would call my solution. First off, you tell that Egypt's El Sisi to get his ass over there to Syria and head a coalition of Arab soldiers. Mind you, the ones we've spent billions over the last decade training how to fight their own fight. I mean, Syria's got gas, but it's not the type of gas that we use over here. we got our own gas. We don't need the oil as much as we did. And besides there, Mr. Sissy, it'll make you seem like a real man if you can settle things over in Syria. Because let's face it, now, either you or the kings of Jordan or Saudi Arabia want to see Syria run by a bunch of radicals, because you guys would be next. Right? And we'll provide the logistics support that we usually do, fly some drones over for you. But in the end, as any uh, leader will tell you, war is good for the economy. That's why we have so many. Yes. War will be good for your economy. Get your people working. Stop all the sit-ins. You'll be a hero. Syria will be saved and the world will be a better place. But just in case you get any fancy ideas, fella, keep your hands off the Jews, because we still got their back. That's my solution. Your problems in the Middle East. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Dave, for coming out tonight, being on set. Thanks to Darren behind the scenes for his movie update, and to the rest of the staff of iOS News, you better be back here Sunday. Good night.